You can have your literal happy ending, which this film has, but how happy is it? You can't go on living in that big old house with a ghost! I don't believe in ghosts. Well, it's a beautiful, complicated, scary, sinister, compelling love story. Which is about a, uh, a young woman who meets a incredible rich guy, marries him, and then all sorts of hijinks ensue when she returns to England and has to come to terms with um, his sordid past. Mr. Winter, may I present Mrs. Danvers? Welcome to Manderley. Daphne de Maurier writes a lot about women and their position in society and what it is to be born female and have to take on the, the to be the sort of pale reflection of a man. Um, you know, you feel that a lot in her writing. Oh, I can't do this because I'm not good enough and I can't do that because I'm not, a, you know, it's a man's world. And it's sort of absolutely infuriating. We're talking about a period where, where the chances that a, a woman had were far slimmer um, to sort of get on in the world and you needed to have a man. And I think a lot of women um, in that, at that time and of um, Mrs. Danvers' age group would have lost their man in the war, in the First World War. So she has then been reduced to um, becoming an employee. And instead of having her own house, she has to run somebody else's house and look after somebody else's child. And, and the child that she looks after, she, she, she manages to create this monster that we now discover is Rebecca, um, who behaves very badly with men, who's fantastically beautiful, who looks after herself, who orders expensive lingerie from London, who has exquisite taste, who can do no wrong. And this is all Mrs. Danvers' creation. When Lily James's character appears, she's sort of panicked, horrified and jealous and angry because she could have been Lily James's character. I wonder what she's thinking about you, taking her husband, using her name. <laughs> she just wanted him to be happy. Happy? No, he'll never be happy. In the Hitchcock adaptation, she was much more seen as a villain. But in this, when I read it, I, I felt, you know, there's something very sympathetic about, about Danvers and that she holds the secrets of the house. And she's like, she um, loved Rebecca and she's, she's feeling um, great loss about her and she's in great mourning about her. But she also knows that it, it, there's something wrong and, and, um, and she, she's going to the audience like, this, there's something wrong about all this stuff and we should we, we you really should question what's going on here even though I know you're really enjoying them being in love but that this is terrible you can talk to me about her I have no secrets from you all marriages have their secrets you know there are the, the these kind of ebbs and flows of, of ideas within this script that and, and this film into uh, that, that looks at kind of privilege and how privilege works and like obviously Maxim de Winter being the prime example of it, he, you know, nothing touches him. He moves through life. He can murder people and get away with it, and that's all fine, you know. And and um, and and really, his only qualification for that is being rich. Also, good looking helps, but rich is the main the main thing. Um, and for Lily James's character, it, she everything is a struggle, you know. And you see that, and that over time, she does become um, stronger and more powerful, and and kind of gets to this position that she can hold at the end of it. But at what Price, you know, what price is she paid by the to 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 jump up through those echelons of of, of kind of um, control and power, and I think that's the it, that's the kind of lesson of it is that yeah you can have your you can have your literal happy ending which this film has, but how happy is it you know if you've got to it by clam clambering again literally over the bodies of others you know their happiness is basically the foundation of that is a murdered woman. <laughs>